What is a healthy ecosystem and why does it matter? An ecosystem is a community of living and non-living things. The water, plants, animals, air, sunlight, and soil all interact to maintain a balanced, healthy environment. If there isn't enough sunlight or water, or if the soil doesn't have the right nutrients, some plants will grow more slowly or may not grow at all. If the plants are missing or become scarce, the animals that depend on them can decrease in numbers or disappear, and the impact can cascade. Healthy ecosystems are also essential life support systems for our own well-being and livelihood. They provide us with vital goods and services, such as fish, timber, and clean water. If we want our ecosystems to stay healthy, if we want to grow resilient forests, if we want to maintain fish in our lakes and streams, and provide habitat and food for wildlife, it is important to maintain balance within our ecosystems. To maintain a healthy ecosystem, we need to be able to predict when and where environmental threats are occurring on the landscape. Air pollution is one of these environmental threats. Air pollution begins with the emission of pollutants directly into the air. While pollutants can occur naturally from sources, such as erupting volcanoes and forest fires, Human-caused pollutants come from the burning of fossil fuels by power plants, industries, and vehicles, agricultural activities, and other industrial processes. Once these pollutants enter the atmosphere, chemical reactions create other harmful compounds that are deposited to the environment as components of rain, snow, clouds, fog, gases, and fine particles. Sulfur and nitrogen are two of the most harmful air pollutants. Excess sulfur and nitrogen in an ecosystem can lead to soil and surface water acidification. These compounds can remove nutrients like calcium, magnesium, and potassium from the soil, resulting in soil acidification, which leads to nutrient deficiencies for vegetation. Excess sulfur and nitrogen can also cause surface water acidification by reducing water pH, eventually leading to inhospitable aquatic habitats. Severe acidification can ultimately result in decreased growth and increased mortality of certain tree species, such as sugar maples, as well as decreased presence of sensitive fish species and aquatic insects. Too much nitrogen in an ecosystem can lead to what is called eutrophication effects. These effects include nutrient imbalances, changes in species composition, increases in invasive species, and ultimately a decline in ecosystem health. Not all ecosystems or parts of an ecosystem respond to excess sulfur and nitrogen deposition in the same way. Some ecosystems, such as high elevation lakes and streams, alpine meadows, sugar maple forests, and desert environments are particularly sensitive to air pollution deposition. Some organisms, such as lichens and fungi, are also more sensitive to air pollution. If we want to protect these sensitive organisms and ecosystems for their own sake as well as the sake of everyone and everything that depends on them, the first step is to identify when and where damage from excess sulfur and nitrogen is occurring. This brings us to the concept of critical loads, which are used to identify when an ecosystem or a part of an ecosystem begins to experience harm from sulfur or nitrogen deposition. In other words, a critical load is the level of deposition at which an ecosystem begins to experience harm. When a critical load is reached or exceeded, ecosystem damage is expected to begin. There are different sulfur and nitrogen critical loads for different ecosystems and ecosystem parts. For example, the critical load that maintains lake water quality for fish is different from the critical load that maintains soil nutrients for forests. 
The use of critical loads has become a valuable tool for assessing ecosystem health and guiding resource management decisions. Critical loads enable us to predict where air pollution will likely cause harm. We can use these predictions to make regulatory and management decisions to protect sensitive species and ecosystems, along with the web of interdependent and more tolerant species that depend on them. We hope this introductory video has illustrated the significance of air quality in maintaining healthy ecosystems and how critical loads can be used as a tool to predict negative effects. The remaining videos take a closer look at how air pollution affects different environmental components and how critical loads can protect them.